Okay, so um, I started writing this talk this morning and halfway through it, I realized it had really kind of changed um, its nature almost completely. And when Tim said that he invites people to come up here and talk about their passions, I realized that my passion had turned into several personalities that lived on or around the ridge over a period of 90 years. So um, that's a little bit like what the talk has turned into. Um, and these personalities, St. Helen didn't live on the ridge, but she has inspired a lot of the uh, history of Hastings. Pierre Tellard de Chardin, Alastair Crowley, Andrew pitcairn Knowles, and Catherine Cookson. Um, one of the things that I like to think about living in Hastings is the fact that we live in a place that used to be a kind of mythical, magical forest called the Forest of Anderida. When the Romans arrived, this area was forest and they built a fortress at Pevensey and this was impenetrable forest. Um, there was a kind of story that a squirrel, it would have been a red squirrel, could have jumped all the way from Nottingham, tree by tree, down to the south coast. That's how wooded uh, England was at the time. Uh, and I kind of like to think of us living in Hastings and St Leonard's in Silver and Arida as a kind of Sylvanian family community trying to connect with our mythical landscape and something of the spirit of the haven that this forest represented um, can still be found in Hastings and I think the kind of overarching um, idea behind my talk is that Hastings has historically uh, provided this haven for uh, free thinkers and eccentric uh, revolutionary people over history um, and I'm using to kind of hold this together so here's the forest of Anderida and it should uh, merge into modern day Hastings that was good wasn't it <laughs> uh, so some of the area of Hastings has obviously been reclaimed by the sea but the area that I'm focusing on specifically is the area, I don't know who's familiar with it here, but St. Helens. I find St. Helens a fascinating area. St. Helens Wood, Beauport Park, there used to be a Roman uh, iron um, uh, uh, foundry there and a big bathhouse. Apparently there was an excavation in the 80s, but they dug it all up. It was part of this TV show. Um, and then they were like, oh, what do we do with this massive Roman bathhouse now? So they just covered it all back up again and there's a caravan park there. Uh, so there used to be a natural harbour there and uh, boats used to be able to travel up to Beauport, collect iron. It was important in Roman times. Massive caches of Roman coins have been found uh, around Elphinstone Road area. So I find that area really, really fascinating. And for me, the sort of spiritual mother goddess of Hastings is St. Helen. Uh, St. Helen, the church at Orr, I don't know if any of you have been there, but there's a, a ruin of a church, uh, St. Helen's in Orr, um, and it was believed to have been dedicated to St. Helen by King Offa, and potentially there before 1066, and uh, here's a picture of the ruin. I think this is a few years ago, because there's a group that have recently um, tidied it all up and made it a lot nicer. But St. Helen was an amazing character. Uh, she was the mother of Constantine the Emperor. She was a really good Christian, come from a quite humble beginning. She was a, a good stable maid apparently. Uh, she was born in Asia Minor and she met her husband who was going to become emperor. When she met him apparently uh, they were wearing matching silver bracelets and when they saw each other they were like, oh my god, we've got matching silver bracelets, this is totally a sign, we're like soulmates, we should be together forever. And she became his uh, concubine, uh, concubine, common-in-law wife, whatever, she mothered uh, his child Constantine. And Constantine adored his mother and he gave her unlimited access to the treasury and set her up as a sort of spiritual Indiana Jones and she toured the Holy Lands collecting uh, holy relics and she's famous for being the discoverer of the true cross. She went to Jerusalem, she dug up a Roman temple to Venus and underneath it found three crosses. She found a sick woman, the sick woman touched these three crosses and when she touched the third cross she was miraculously healed which uh, gave rise to the legend of the true cross. She's also famous for importing cats to Cyprus to rid a monastery of snakes 
and she's responsible for the cat population of Cyprus, I think, because there are a lot of uh, stray cats around in Cyprus. Um, so this is a picture of the ruin. I don't know if anyone here has been up to uh, St. Helen's Church, but it's a lovely old church. And for a period of time, the most kind of illustrious residents of Hastings and St. Leonard's were buried there. This is the grave of Musgrave Briscoe, who was part of the uh, rich Briscoe family of St. Leonard's and Hastings. His son, Wastel Briscoe, uh, built Bohemia House. He's of Coghurst Hall, and they had a lot of property, slaves, and all sorts of uh, interesting uh, investments. Um, St. Helen has 25 holy wells dedicated to her around the UK and this is a, a spring that can be found in St. Helen's Woods and lots of people speculate that this spring may be part of an older church that um, was dedicated to St. Helen. Nobody knows too much about it in the Victorian era it was converted into a kind of folly and there's a, a ruins of a water fountain there. Then, if you go a little further along the ridge, you come to Or Place, where Pierre Teilhard de Chardin um, worked for four years. There was a theological seminar, uh, a uh, uh, Jesuit seminary at Or Place that's now been knocked down and replaced by some 80s Mock Tudor houses. But um, this was a uh, place, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, I don't know if any of you have heard of him, but he was a, an amazing amazingly interesting cosmic philosopher who uh, at the time challenged the Catholic Church because he believed in evolution and he was a paleontologist. He was involved in the excavation of the Peking Man and also exonerated a little bit something to do with the Piltdown um, Man hoax. He found one of the teeth. I don't know if you know about the Piltdown hoax but it was a skull that was found in Piltdown and made out of some orangutan bits and bobs and passed off as the missing link. And he apparently knew it was a hoax, but wasn't um, massively involved in the construction of it. Uh, so here's the plaque being revealed uh, outside Old Place. There's a couple of really horrible mock Tudor houses behind them there. Um, but Pierre Teilhard de Chardin was an amazing, interesting philosopher. I don't know if any of you have read his books, but he kind of influenced the New Age movement quite heavily because uh, he had this uh, idea that the evolution of mankind is an ascension to uh, reaching God. He called it the Omega point, this, this rising up of consciousness to form unity. He was really ahead of his time, and it wasn't until after he died that his uh, papers were published and uh, Pope Benedict um, kind of said he was actually all right. So this is our place. Uh, this is the Jesuit seminary, and just to the side of that, there was uh, this African missions chapel where it had like beautiful interior, um, a really amazing place, and very kind of interesting that it existed in Hastings. Uh, he would have been very inspired by the landscape. He went around, he collected a lot of fossils, and he donated quite a massive collection to Hastings Museum. If you ever go to Hastings Museum, you can see quite a lot of his. Um, collections of fossils there. And then on to why I entitled this talk Occult Hastings in the first place, Alistair Crowley. Here he is uh, in all of his ritual garb. Uh, here he is doing some naked yoga, relaxing. But when he turned up in Hastings, he was a frail old man. And he came to stay at a place called Netherwood on the ridge. I don't know if any of you have gone past that. But... Um, he, was, uh, he came to stay with a couple called uh, Kathleen and Vernon Simmons and they ran a guest house called Netherwood and he arrived in 1945 just after the end of the war um, and Vernon and Kathleen were kind of famous for being this eccentric couple and they didn't have very much money and during the war it was quite hard to run a guest house but Vernon was pretty well connected in London and he used to invite um, speakers down from London and they would be offered free bed and board and a bit like this they would talk to the guests uh, in exchange for bed and board and they created this like amazing um, atmosphere of learning and uh, art and culture and Alistair Crowley got wind of this from a mutual friend that was in an amateur dramatic society with Vernon and uh, 
Vernon came home one day and apparently said to Kathleen, is it all right if Alistair Crowley comes to stay at Netherwood? And she went, who's Alistair Crowley? And he said, oh, the wickedest man in the world. And she went, yeah, I don't mind. So he came to stay in Netherwood. Um, when he, just before he arrived, the couple received a telegram saying, um, expect a consignment of frozen meat. And uh, it was just after the war and meat was still being rationed. So some food inspectors turned up because this was all rather suspicious. And then actually it was Alistair Crowley in the back of an ambulance and uh, they didn't really get any extra food supplies. When he got to Netherwood, he was given a choice of rooms and he of course chose number 13, which was at the front of the property. And at this point he was addicted to heroin and he used to hang out with uh, Kathleen, whose nickname was Johnny, and shoot up heroin and write letters all night. So if you go past Netherwood today, that's all that's left of it. And just a little bit further along, around the same time that Crowley would have been at Netherwood, uh, this man ran a health hydro with his wife Margaret. Andrew Pitcairn Knowles was a photojournalist who travelled all around Europe and he ran this health hydro called Reposo on the ridge, which was really quite forward thinking. It was kind of naturopathic remedies. Um, this is a bit of hydrotherapy, a bit of watering can on a kid. That's definitely going to help. His, his photos are incredible. He was using a silver gelatin method, I think it's called, and his photos are absolutely beautiful. The v &A have his archive, and here's some examples of the sorts of things you'd get up to at Reposo. A lot of emphasis placed on the natural elements. Uh, some patients air bathing with one of the doctors. <laughs> and also they were really into vegetarianism, they created this uh, vegetarian cookbook. But one of the best cures, or one of the most interesting cures they had, was called the scroth cure. And this involved eating dry bread and sleeping in wet sheets. And surprisingly, it's still being practiced in what must be a Bavarian hotel room to this day, because I can see the lederhosen and the photograph in the background. Um, it's probably a little bit more glamorous than it was in the Reposo days. Apparently, during a tour of Europe, the uh, Pitcairn Knowles, uh, the, the father, Andrew, and his son came across uh, this technique that uh, people in, I think he was... Uh, using on livestock and he came back and he kind of adapted it for human beings so apparently the scroft cure is still alive and kicking in this Bavarian hotel room and then this brings me on to Catherine Cookson who you certainly might not associate with being an occult figure and I, I guess I meant occult in terms of hidden the hidden side of Hastings that you don't get to see there was this really interesting scene on the ridge for a while there Catherine Cookson was a really fascinating woman. She grew up in abject poverty in South Shields and she was the illegitimate daughter of an alcoholic barmaid. Um, she was brought up by her nan and what she thought was her sister, but when she was seven she discovered it was actually her mum. And uh, she was really into reading, very, inspiration, no, very inspired to get out of her poverty and um, traumatic childhood. She had a bleeding disorder, she was ill and depressed, she really suffered as a child and she was desperate to escape. She um, managed to get a job um, in working as the laundry manager in Essex and from there she applied to work in Hastings Workhouse which was on Frederick Road. Um, here's a picture of the laundry team having a nice picnic on clean white sheets. Um, and she had a relationship with another woman called Nan Smythe and they moved into a flat in the old town and made the mistake of inviting the alcoholic mother down to come and live with them. It sounds like a scenario that I could definitely envisage <laughs> happening in modern day Hastings. Um, eventually the drunk mum became really annoying so she bought this amazing 14-roomed mansion and moved them all in and set up some sort of weird guest house caring home. Um, and then there, she met her future husband, Tom Cookson, who kind of was the rock and inspired her to um, fulfill her dreams and become a writer. She wrote 130 novels. She had uh, four miscarriages, five heart attacks, 
Tom supported her throughout this and was apparently a really amazing, lovely man. She came from the most uh, deprived background imaginable. He was an Oxford graduate and he was a teacher at Hastings Grammar School, which is now... Um, that's it, William Parker, which is now William Parker. And that grammar school had these illusions of being um, a kind of really posh school and the kids were really, really badly treated and the teachers were famous for hitting them and being especially cruel to them. And Tom Cookson was known as Cookie to the uh, students there. And kids were, some of the students were committing suicide. They had a really tough time um, with the expectations that were put upon them. And Tom Cookson, by all accounts, seemed like a really lovely, great teacher. Loads of the students said he was a, a really nice man. And he supported Catherine Cookson. She had a lot of depression in her life, a lot of illness. Um, they ended up dying and leaving £20 million pounds to charity, and she became the 17th richest woman in the UK. And when she died in 1998, uh, Tom Cookson died 17 days afterwards of a broken heart. And I think that... Uh, Catherine Cookson is an unusual character, but all of these people represent people that were different during that time. And in Hastings, they found this sanctuary, this place where they could be themselves. And to paraphrase Alistair Crowley, come to Hastings and do what thou wilt. <laughs> Fabulous, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Sarah, the, um, for, for a brilliant insight into Hastings. I've lived in, in this neck of the woods for over 20 years, and I don't think I knew even, even the percentage of, of that. So uh, that, was, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any questions for Sarah um, about uh, anything to do with, uh, well, I'll cut Hastings and the characters that, uh, uh, that you have told us about? I'm definitely going to check out uh, that. That church, or, or, or church? St. Helens. St. Helens. Off Elphinstone Road, down Centurion Drive. So, going down the church, away from the centre. You know where Hastings Football Club is? Yes. So you just sort of turn off there. Okay. It's quite close. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and those woods with the, uh, the spread in there about that. Yeah, it's, there used to be a priory in St. Helens Woods, and the Jesuit seminary was there as well. Where the spring comes out, it feeds two pools. One was a bathing pool for the monks, and the other one was a stock pond. But I worked at Bohemian Village Voice. I don't know if anyone remembers that excellent publication. But uh, I learned a lot. I used to type up the manuscripts for Edward Preston, who's a local historian. I learned a lot about St. Helens Woods history. And um, there are so many amazing buildings and people that have lived here. And I like remembering that ESK was once a priory. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yeah, 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 fantastic. The, um, and we've got Hastings Independent Press, in, the, um, the, uh, who are fabulous. If, you've not, uh, if you haven't uh, checked out the HIP, then, then you must do that. It's a fabulous new publication that, that, that we have uh, in our town. So anybody got any questions for Sarah on Occult Hastings? Anyone who is uh, thinking of buying property around uh, Elphinstone Road? Um, that, uh, or moving this way? Yes, over, over there. Out. How did St. Helen end up in Hastings? She didn't actually come to St. Helens. Um, she was the favourite saint of King Offa, who, when he invaded, his kind of influence pervaded Hastings. So she stayed in the Middle East. She did come over. She, um, she did visit England, and she supposedly set up uh, St. Helens Chapel in Colchester, I think. But that was as, about as far as her involvement went. Brilliant. And uh, there was another hand up. I couldn't quite see. Someone else was. Uh, any other questions? Someone behind? No. The, uh, um, any other questions for Sarah on? Um, where, where is all where's all place? All place is also off Elphinstone Road. Um, it's actually just around the corner from where the spring is. Uh, I think it might be called. Uh, Chardin Drive now, where the actual seminary was. Because I mean, is is there a, a, like a publication in Hastings that you know shows you where all these buildings are? Because I mean, I just don't. There's quite a lot of that... local historians um, that have published books, that, but they are pretty specialists. You don't find them because I worked at the Bohemian Village Voice. We had a library of these publications. So yeah, um, one of the old mayors 
um, of Hastings was a really fanatical local historian. He wrote tons of books about it. But Edward Preston, he just had a typewriter, so he used to come into the office and I used to have to put his um, manuscripts into the computer. Well, that was great. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Yes. Catherine Cookson, so um, they set up this uh, nursing home, being the boarding house. Mm. And that she did that with her husband, is that? She did that first with her uh, <coughs> uh, lover, I suppose, Nan, and Kate, her mum. And then it seems like those relationships were all pretty dramatic, and she met Tom Cookson and they fell in love with each other, and they had this very kind of nurturing, supportive relationship because she was a really troubled woman. She was very um, ill, very depressed. And, and what happened to the lover, and what happened to did they maintain the, 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 this home all through their relationship? And she, what she they the left, and the Tom and Catherine moved into Loretto, which was kind of their farm. They became their home. She had four miscarriages, so she, it was a big tragedy for her that she was never able to have children. Um, but her and Tom lived together as a kind of in a normal family home after that. Okay, so, so the nursing home and the lover moved to one side, she moved yeah. with Tom and they had a, yeah. they set up a house together. He kind of kicked Nan out. Okay. And their house was up for sale in the last two years. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. That was on St Helens Park Road, the main house that they bought the rent out. Any more? Any more questions about that? They all look hands waving in the back. This is the press coming to you. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, it's not a question, it's just a kind of an answer to the gentleman's uh, inquiry down there. There is a website dedicated to St Helens Old Church, so if you Google it, uh, it's very easy to find. Yeah, Hastings Chronicle also has really good yeah. uh, information. And Googling is probably the best way to find out all this stuff, actually, because there are good resources online now. Yeah, and if you walk up some Helen's Park Road, you can see the Google's account that you at the side of. Mm, yeah, that, uh, where does that come from? Um, there's a little, uh, I can't remember the name of the road now, but yeah, t uh, a little road turns into a park, and that water fountain's there. It is. I drink the water from that um, spring. It's great. It's really cold, and it's obviously been going. It's obviously been a spring there for a very long time. My friend Mark actually uncovered it um, when he was going for a walk through the woods. It's it's kind of off piste. It's not an attraction as such. In fact, I think the the people in charge there have tried to hide it from people because uh, they think it's dangerous. Brilliant. I love the sound. I'm going there tomorrow to have a drink. Yeah. Any, any more questions for Sarah? Um, for yeah, one, one question. How do we make Hastings great again? Because I think it's like I think the perception of Hastings is it's a bit stop shit. drinking. Stop. <laughs> yeah, stop drinking. Or like people say to me, oh, don't all the drug addicts come to Hastings? Like, I think it's such a shame. Like if we were like a great forest and it's like all this history, but it feels like it's a bit shit. <laughs> well, it's funny because I was just talking to Richard, who gave the talk on the interpretation of dreams, and he was saying that Hastings is, I think, only second to Glasgow in the male alcoholism. And uh, I think that we have developed this sort of drinking culture in Hastings. And part of the reason why I set up the Explorers Club was because I stopped drinking a few years ago, and I was like, no one does anything other than get pissed, so I need to do something else. And I thought I was going to go to university to study anthropology, but I didn't have any cash, so I started sneaking into the University of Sussex and pretending I was a student. And then I realised, oh, I could just get them people to come and talk in my house, and I wouldn't even have to go anywhere. So I met um, uh, Professor Anil Seth, who runs the uh, Centre for uh, Consciousness Studies at the University of Sussex. And I saw him giving a lecture upstairs at a pub, and it was much better and more informal than the lecture that I'd seen that I'd snuck into on the campus. And so I said to him, if I give you 100 quid, can you come and do it in my house? And he said, yes. So then I just charged all of my mates a fiver, and uh, he came and gave a talk in my house, and then every single person I've asked has said yes. So it's worked out really well. So I think that the Hastings will become great again because people will get bored of uh, boozing, hopefully. Yeah, I think that's right. I think most things are cyclical, aren't they, in life? And uh, certainly, you know, I think there is a sense that Hastings and St. Helens is having a bit of a resurgence and, you know, almost going back to its heyday in the sort of perhaps the early 1900s, late 1800s, when um, 
when things were great, and things are good actually. You know, a bit of, a bit of drink doesn't harm too much, and uh, and, and the town is the town. You just one beer. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the town is is is, is booming. The um, and, and doing and doing really well again. So uh, so fabulous. The uh, any any final questions for Sarah? The um, uh, just oh, one one last question here, and then we'll and then we'll end. Um, I mean, Catherine Cookson is a very famous, very popular author. Are, is there any, any kind of uh, tourist routes, guides, museums dedicated to in the town? Like, are the council involved at all? Is there Not that I know of, actually. It doesn't appear to have been much of a focus. Um, I mean, she is a really interesting character. I had no idea until I started looking into this, like what amazing, interesting life she had. Very tragic, though, as well. Um, I guess, you know, I really wanted to include a woman in the talk as well. Um, and, yeah, I think she wrote an autobiography, I think. Um, so I've, I reckon fans of Catherine Cookson know a lot about her, but in terms of, uh, someone said to me tonight they didn't realise Catherine Cookson lived in Hastings. doesn't seem to be... I, I imagine there's probably a blue plaque on her house on St Helens Park Road, but I can't say I've seen it recently. So, there should be. Maybe we should just do that. I think I think that's brilliant. I think it's a great idea to have a, a tour and link and link some of the stuff up. Maybe Hastings Independent Press could uh, could flag that in another issue. And I love the fact too that you uh, that you, you thought of sneaking into universities. My, my daughter has uh, just finished her GCSEs, and I and I was talking about universities, and I said obviously the fees are so high. To be honest, sweetheart, they, they don't check it. They just 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 rock up at a lecture and just yeah, you'll be in. There's no reason to say that doesn't happen. <laughs> so fantastic. Um, I'm going to end it there because we're about half past ten and I'm conscious of time. So can we um, please thank Sarah.